Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. So, uh, yeah, I have Dylan <laughs> and Corgi fur. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, this is Dylan, if you haven't met him. This is my basically co-host on this channel. He is usually in the background squeaking toys, especially my early videos. And today he is going to be uh, destroying an owl behind the tripod. He's still terrified of the tripod, so he won't knock it over or anything, but he does like to make noise. So, you done? Okay. I'm now covered in corgi fur. Welcome. We are going to be talking about my favorite books so far of 2018. I say favorite because some of these have some pretty significant flaws. So I can't like say like I think they're the best books, whatever that means, of 2018. But these are some of my personal favorites. So I thought I would talk about them and let you know. And what I did was I thought about the books that left me emotionally devastated or had me, had me fascinated or ones that threw me into a total book coma. So I'm going to be talking about these books and they're really in no particular order. Generally speaking though, know if they're coming near the end that they're more my favorite and if they're in the beginning they're less my favorite, but I love all of them. So just know that that is there. And I'm going to remove the fur from my mouth. Pressing on. The show must go on. Alright, so first up we have a book that I found so fascinating. I mean, I don't agree. So here's a book I found so fascinating which is Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro. I did do a single review video on this and I found this fascinating because I love to study theology. That's something that I really enjoy. Um, I haven't really talked about it a lot on this channel because I don't really read a lot of full books on it. I just read a lot of articles and different things. Uh, so I was really interested in this, which is about two people falling in love almost over their theology and their discussion of intellectual things, etc. so on and so forth. I'll link my review video up above my head and put it down below so you can go check it out. Um, I really enjoyed this book and found it very fascinating, especially Quattro's prose. It's beautiful. Um, I tabbed it within an inch of his life. I just really enjoyed it. It was very fascinating. There are some huge flaws in here. I don't, obviously, I feel like it goes without saying that I don't agree with the majority of things, the, you know, theologically in here. So please don't think in my review that I'm saying that I agree with the theological perspectives of uh, two of the characters in here, but I just really enjoyed that discussion. And it was interesting. And I loved how there was a love affair intellectually very much in this book that really didn't go well physically. So that's all I'm going to say. Go check it out if you haven't already or if that sounds interesting to you. A book that I really enjoyed, the more I think about it, I, I see there are more flaws in it, but I still really enjoyed reading it and I still really enjoyed the story and I would definitely be up for rereading it. And that is The Book of M by Paying Shepherd. I'm kind of surprised by this quite honestly because this isn't a Kendra book typically, but I love the story and I was fascinated by what was going on. This is about a post-apocalyptic world where people are losing their shadows and then they lose their memory. This really looks at memory and how it makes us human and just so many different things. And I really enjoyed that. Now, not all of the viewpoints are as strong as the other viewpoint characters. And this is a pretty complex book and you can lose a lot of readers with that. And I think Pink Shepherd does, you know, lose control of the narrative a little bit near the end. Uh, but it is really just a fun book to read and just a book that I would recommend to a lot of people. It's just, just one of those books. So um, that is, that, yes, just go read it. Just go read it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, really tragic, but a lot of fun. I've never said those words before. It's really tragic, but a lot of fun. You should go check it out. I don't know. Another book that I really enjoyed that I keep thinking about is Thirsty by Madeline Miller. This is the follow-up to Song of Achilles. This is in the same universe, a kind of different story though. It's about Thirsty. And I love how Madeline Miller approaches women in ancient literature. Um, and in classic literature in the traditional sense. I loved her approach to that. So I really academically, I guess, and as a lover of mythology, I really enjoyed this. And I really enjoyed the story. I'm not a big fan of Cersei, especially in the beginning, but once you get about, I don't know, quarter way in, I think it really starts picking up. I loved seeing all of the different family trees and genealogies of these different gods and of the Titans versus, you know, the new gods of Zeus and different things and how they're all related. Just as a lover of mythology, I really enjoyed this book. Though I do think that if you don't 
love mythology or you haven't read up on mythology that you're going to get lost in the book. So that is a thing to be aware of, but I, I personally really enjoyed it. Another book I really enjoyed is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's uh, debut. That's the word I'm looking for. Debut novel, uh, Purple Hibiscus. Now, this is about a girl in Nigeria growing up with a very religious family, um, but her dad has kind of swallowed this whole colonialist idea of religion in Nigeria, but he's very physically abusive. And I feel like he kind of represents colonialized religion in Nigeria in that he is not very kind or gracious. He's not what really a faith should be. And so there's a lot of discussion about decolonizing religion in Nigeria in this book that I found very fascinating, though her dad is very abusive. Her aunt, who still practices religion, practices it as, you know, she didn't try to practice it like the white people practice it or whatever. Uh, she practices it as her, a personal relationship uh, with God and in her own way. And I really appreciated that because there is a lot of problems with religions going from one country to another in that they try to make the people act like a different country's version of that religion or it's expressed differently and it's just a big discussion that I really appreciated from Adichie's perspective because I don't think she does practice any sort of religion that I'm aware of. Uh, so I think she might have grown up that way, I'm not sure, but I appreciated that because it's a very interesting discussion. Also, following on the heels of that, Chibandu Onuzo had a great discussion about uh, that topic on the Reading Room podcast, and I really appreciated that, and it really helped me understand more about this book, but I just love this, I just love this book. Moving on to The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. Of all of the books I'm going to talk about today, no, that's a lie, I just looked at my snack. The rest of the books had me devastated, and I've cried for every single one of the the books that I'm going to be talking about here in a second. So, but this one had me crying so much because then I watched the movie and this is about Gogol and he is an Indian American uh, living obviously in America, but his parents immigrated to the United States and we get their backstory. But by a weird series of events, he's named Gogol. And that's not the name they wanted to name him. It was like a nickname that kind of became his real name. But the pressure of that name and what it means for him just just how he dealt with his identity and revolving around his name. It's just a great look at that. And Jhumpa Lahiri, like, there's no word there that shouldn't be there. Her prose is like perfection. And this is just what would be probably top book of the year for me, one of them, because it is so fantastic. This is one that I personally love, but also think, like, in a literary capital L sense, is just beautiful. It is one of the best books and one of my favorite books. So I reviewed it recently in my five star reading predictions video. So if you want to go hear more about that, definitely go check it out. But go read about Gogol and his life and his namesake because yeah, Dimple Lahiri. I also just bought two more Dimple Lahiri books and now I own them all. It's very exciting. So the next book has so many problems. I don't even know where to start, but you know what? It's such a good story. I don't care. I don't care. And that is The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This book is so unwieldy and is all over the place. And some of the characters are so incredibly flat or, you know, it covers so much time because this is about an entire guy's life. But it's tied together by Cyril Avery. And I love Cyril Avery. He's so interesting. And this is about his life living as a gay man growing up. Um, I think in the, he was born, I think in the 60s or something. He just grew up during that time period. And, you know, being gay was illegal in Ireland. And then he goes through all of that age time. And it's just how his life and the time he had was lost because of different things and there are subplots in here that just had me sobbing. When I finished this book, I absolutely loved it. I was like, this book is somewhat a mess, but I do not care because, oh, I mean, it is so beautiful. It did not feel like it was, what, 600 and some pages? What is this? Yeah, it's like 600 pages. I don't care. It's beautiful and I love it so much. Yeah. So, uh, notice, I think this is like the only dude on the list. So congratulations to John Boyd to making, being the, you know, token male on my uh, favorite books. But I just love this book. 
It's so beautiful. I just basically just, I feel like I just word vomited about that book, but that's how it makes me feel. So one of my favorite books of the year is definitely Educated by Tara Westover. This is about Tara living in the rural hills of Idaho. As you know, probably, maybe, I grew up in the rural hills of Appalachia in the tri-state area of Ohio, Kentucky, and uh, West Virginia. So that was special. And her story, there's just so much I related to her and her story about her living in a rural community and, and going to college and different things. But really at the heart of this is something that I knew not a lot about, and that is her struggle with emotional abuse. Well, I do have really close friends that have suffered, like Tara has suffered. I have never had such an inside look at a family like that. And her story is just so brave and she treats it like a historian and it's so technically well done and she interviews people about her own memories and there's such a beautiful theme of memory and reality as a survivor of abuse that she has and how she has driven her life to overcome that and she eventually did get a doctor over uh, in the UK I think Cambridge so yeah she you know is doing really well for herself on the outside but she does talk about how emotionally she has really struggled even throughout her career as an academic and philosopher and all these different things so loved it loved it loved it just ah oh, just can't get enough the book that made me cry the most this year that's i am i am i am by maggie o'farrell so this is about maggie o'farrell's 17 brushes with death and each chapter reads like a short story only it's a memoir so like a mini memoir whatever those are and she puts them together to create this cohesive whole of a life but it's non-linear so you get specific information in specific ways and I found that very interesting the order that she did but we got to talk to her on the Reading Woman podcast and Maggie O'Farrell has quickly become one of my favorite authors who I've read so few books of <laughs> even though I own all of her books now and I'm going through them uh, I love her so much but as someone with chronic illness, hearing her stories about brushes with death and my own brushes with death with my chronic illness is just so personally moving that when we were done interviewing her, I just sobbed. I just can't, it was so personal to talk to her and hear her describe things and I just loved it. I love this book. It is beautifully written. It talks about, you know, her journey going from being a child suffering a severe chronic disease that was very disabling to her daughter who now has, a, you know, I think it's some sort of autoimmune disorder where she can go into anaphylactic shock really easily from various things. So love this book. So heartbreaking. And just personally for me and my life, this is probably the book that touched it the most this year. And this year, fiction-wise, has really suffered. I honestly am really struggling to find books that just blow me away. But I did find this one, and I really love it. And genuinely, I could not stop reading it. And I, even looking back on it, it's just a beautiful and well-constructed book. And its parts and how she does it. And that would be A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. This book is such an introspective look at a family and how it functions. And, you know, as someone who grew up in a religious family and as a person of faith now, I appreciate her look at religion and at this uh, Muslim family. And they are an Indian American Muslim family you know, living in California. And we start at this wedding and this brother has returned and he's returned for this wedding and they know he's been estranged from his family for three years. His sister is getting married, so he came back for the wedding. Now, I have seen a lot of, you know, Muslim Americans and Muslims from other different countries around the world who have really loved this book, so that makes me happy that people, you know, this is an own voices book, but I also wanna see people in the community and how they feel about it. And they have really raved about this book and I've really appreciated that as well, knowing that, that this is an accurate representation. And, you know, in this book, there are three children and each child represents often a different reaction to growing up in a conservative faith. And that is really true to life, not just in the Muslim community, but in, you know, other, conservative religious communities as well and I love that and I haven't read this yet on my channel because I filmed my wrap-up I think for June because I wasn't gonna be here and I read it like right after I filmed it and I loved it and it is perfection just beautiful and it will be in my top books of the year 
hands down. I just love it so much, guys. It is beautiful. And yeah, it. I can't tell you exactly why I love this book, but just know that something happens and you're like, oh my goodness, your entire perspective on what happened throughout this book changes. And it's not in a thriller sense. It's in a very well-crafted way. So those are my favorite books that I have read so far this year and I hope you enjoyed those and I really love them. Um, again, I mentioned the flaws, you know, that I saw as they were there, but they're just all just beautifully well done stories. And I think for me, when I look for favorite books, I focus more on the storytelling and the power of the storytelling within the book. And those to me are just some great stories and yeah. That's what I really enjoy, I think. So, hope you enjoy that. And uh, that's it for me. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.